This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Early in 1976, about six months after I began probing into the Kennedy assassination for the Village Voice, an article caught my attention in, of all places, the National Enquirer. The weekly tabloid was not generally known for its investigative veracity, but this particular story was thoroughly documented. The subject was Mary Pinchot Meyer, a Washington socialite who'd been shot twice and murdered while walking near the Potomac River on October 12, 1964. Since the originally accused assailant had been acquitted, the identity of her killer remained unknown. Publicly, so did the identity of her lover until the Esquire story alleged that for almost two years before his assassination, on November 22, 1963, Mary Meyer had been having an affair with President John F. Kennedy. The Inquirer recounted, and this would soon be corroborated in other periodicals, that Mary had kept a diary. The weekend after her death, a small group of people were said to have gathered at her Georgetown home in search of it. Cord Meyer, her ex-husband, and a high official in the CIA, was there. So was James Angleton, head of the CIA's counterintelligence division, and his wife Cicely, a close friend of Mary's. Also present was Tony Bradley, Mary's sister, and the wife of Washington Post editor Ben Bradley. The story went that none of them could locate Mary's diary, and that her sister had later found it inside a locked steel box containing dozens of letters, including some from the slain President Kennedy. Bradley had then turned the box over to Angleton, who took the material to CIA headquarters. James Truitt, a journalist for Newsweek and another friend of the Myers, said he'd received a letter from Angleton saying, As to the diary and related papers, I burned them. For more than twenty years, Angleton had been a spook's spook, who roamed the agency corridors looking to ferret out penetrations by the Soviet Union. Then, in 1974, a new CIA director, William Colby, leaked word to the media that Angleton had also been in charge of Operation Chaos, a domestic intelligence gathering program that far exceeded the CIA's original charter. Angleton was forced to resign. Not long thereafter, he began meeting with journalists for the first time, obviously intent on getting his side of certain stories on the record. I was one of those journalists although I never really understood why Angleton chose to wine and dine me on three occasions at his customary meeting place, Washington's Army and Navy Club. After all, the village voice hardly seemed like his cup of tea, and I did not disguise the fact that I was looking into a probable conspiracy in the death of President Kennedy. Indeed, the first time we met, late on a mid-December afternoon in 1975 in a plush club lounge, I gave him one of my voice articles to leaf through. Angleton lit a cigarette, took a sip of his martini, and said, The subject is a far more complex one than reflected in your article. 